Hello, good morning everyone. I'm Irana Perrizzani, I'm a thesis student in Environmental Archaeology at the University of Oxford. And this morning I'm going to introduce to you a class of desk archaeology on digital archaeology. That is to say, archaeology that can you do from your desk. Archaeologists are often seen from the general public as adventure people always traveling in foreign country in difficult environment, often destroying temples or fighting against the Nazis. I mean, don't get me wrong, of course there is a fair amount of traveling in foreign countries still in non pandemic times. Of course, that doesn't involve destroying temples. This is, of, uh, for instance, me in Iraq excavating in a very ancient site or in Costa Rica trying to understand a subterranean channel in a theological site. All right, but what is archaeology? The Oxford Dictionary describes it as the study of human history and poetry history through the excavation of sites and the knowledge of artifacts and other physical remains. To be honest with you, I'm not really satisfied with this, this definition, so I would like to take a couple of minutes and think about this definition and why you think I'm not happy with that. First of all, um, archaeology for me is the understanding of the human culture, and the human culture modifies continuously in a dynamic process. Therefore, we are not just studying things that happened a long time ago, but we can also study things that happened a few years ago. For instance, there is a current of archaeology that is called industrial archaeology that studies things happening just the last century. Second, unfortunately, because I love digging, we not always have to dig. And actually, digital archaeology is helping us so much in not always digging, on digging just where and where it's necessary. Also, we can work with museographic collection, archives, etc. And this also doesn't imply digging. Third, archaeology does not always work archaeological sites, we can work with artifacts which are objects made, modified and used by humans, features which are rest of building structure or ecophiles which are natural remains related to human activity which can be soil or plant for instance. Now is your turn. What do you think we mean by digital archaeology? Please take a couple of minutes, pause the video and think about it. All right, welcome back. So it's very hard to define digital archaeology because it's a discipline that is already still trying to define itself, as it is very new, as you can imagine. We can define it here, just for some clarity, as an application of digital media and information technology to the collection and the analysis of archaeological data. Remote sensing, geographic information system, aerial photography and photogrammetry are just a few of the techniques that are applied by digital archaeologists. Of course, they are not uh, been developed by archaeologists in the first place. They were often developed first for military purposes, but archaeologists managed to adapt this technology to archaeological analysis and collection of data. And if I say remote sensing, what does come to your mind? Please take a couple of minutes, think about it, and please stop the video for this. Alright, welcome back. So we can define as remote sensing all of the techniques that allow us to acquire information from a distance with the use of a remote sensor. Information can be collected by using different types of sensors from at different altitudes. That can then be produced uh, different source data that can be organized and analyzed in a GIS platform. You might remember the light spectrum from physics class, but basically what I want to remark here is that only a small part of the light spectrum is visible to us, but there is a whole range of other information 
that can be recorded by using different remote sensors in archaeology. For instance, using an infrared camera, you can record the difference in temperature between the soil and, in this case, the structure of this Roman villa that can now be seen even if it's buried under the soil. The LiDAR is a more complex technology that allows us to combine the thermal infrared mapping with a precise measurement of the distance and record a multi-spectral images that allow us to see the tree canopy and even under it. This technique is incredibly useful in archaeology as it allows to create a digital elevation model that will truly separate the layer of the vegetation and uncover the elevation of the ground and with this archaeological feature in the, in the forest. It is by using LiDAR technology that a team of American archaeologists discovered an unknown Hispanic city in the Honduras jungle that was attributed to the legendary white city, La Suya Blanca. But as much as these technologies are extremely useful, they are also incredibly expensive, and just a few archaeological projects can afford it, not mine. On the other hand, digital archaeology has been applied for more than a century using remote sensing techniques that record the visible spectrum and with this uncover the extraordinary sight. This is the case of aerial photography that was originally used during the wars, especially during the Second World War. The photo on the right depicts what is now an archaeological site created by the bombing testing in the Second World War. What you see on the left instead is a balloon used for aerial archaeology by the Oriental Institute of the University of Chicago. Aerial photography not only adds local localizing sites that are hidden under the surface, but also provides a quick tool for mapping the sites, topography and an extension. When drones were not so accessible and powerful, photo could be comfortably be taken from a plane or an helicopter, and this also allowed the archaeology to take photos in a more convenient direction. For this archaeology, it's particularly important to take photos obliquely, as this allowed to record the so-called crop marks. As you can see from the picture on the right, the crop marks are marks left on the ground by the presence or disappearance of archaeological structures. The present Vadic, caused for instance by the degradation of wood structure or part of our, an ancient drainage system, will improve the vegetation growth. This is the opposite for a hidden wall that will prevent the vegetation to grow high. This is explaining why it is so important to its picture from an oblique uh, uh, angle and when the sun is higher, so the photo will record the little shade produced by the vegetation. But taking the picture is just the first step. The following step is interpretation of the picture for identification of hidden archaeological sites. Let's see how trained your archaeological eye is. Please take yourself a couple of minutes and look at this image. What can you see? Could you spot anything? As you can read below, these are the remains of the 18th century beer distillery located in Scotland. The Nodus project first took a picture of the distillery farm and then carried out the excavations. In fact, as you can well see, some walls of the farm are still quite visible on the floor surface, but uh, the circle on the left are barely visible from the ground, and the aerial photography helped localizing them. Those circles are all now killed that were then excavated and mapped by the project, and this is the result. If you want to know more, more about it, please have a look at the very last website of this project. All right, let's now complicate things a bit. I'm going to show you some amazing other pictures taken in the 60s or the 50s that are published in this very cool book, The Historic English Written from the Air. And I will challenge your archaeological view. Please take yourself a couple of minutes and have a, a look at this picture. What can you see? All right, have you noticed these circles one into the other one? These are probably enclosures like the one that you see in this reconstruction that was used in place the historic England for enclosing houses and livestock. 
Okay, let's now come a bit closer to us, at least to me, that I'm in Oxford. Please take a couple of minutes to have a look at this picture. What can you see? All right, let's have a look at the middle of the picture first. Can you notice some circles and some lines? Okay, the circles are probably very similar to the enclosure that we saw before, but the lines are probably three. Do you notice anything in the disposition of the circle on, on, the, on the road? Do you see that the, some are overlapping with the other one? So what I tell you here is that studying uh, aerial photography is fun, but it's also extremely complex. For instance, what do you think we, we can see in this picture? Please take yourself a couple of minutes and look at this. Okay, this is a bit tricky because what you saw, those big thick lines in the field are paleo channel. So they are basically um, ancient river courses or ancient branches of rivers or local streams. So it's very cool how through aerial photography you can not just have information about archaeological sites but also about how the environment changed and how it related to human population. Well, let me now bring you from Oxford to Central America in Nicaragua where uh, I am conducting my ecological project so you can see how I apply digital ecology to my research project. This is a map of the Mayares River Valley, located in east of the Lake of Nicaragua, which is the biggest lake of Central America. The map that you see was created by Leandro Arteaga for his master dissertation using a GIS platform. Each of the orange triangles are archaeological sites that Alejandro and the Pacent team undercovered and recorded during a pedestrian survey with the use of a manual GPS. The sites in this area are hard to uh, record with uh, aerial photography, but this region is also famous for my monumental um, Hispanic sculptures. In fact, in the local museum of La Maria, there is the second tallest structure of all the Americas. And this gives me the opportunity to talk a bit about uh, the photogrammetry technique which was applied by my colleague Juan Aguilar to create a virtual museum. Uh, what you can see in the back here is the creation of a 3D model by the interposition of many pictures taken by Juan from different angles. And this is the result um, of what Juan did in the museum. As you can see, this is a virtual museum uh, that can be visualized everywhere in the world with the use of this goggles and uh, just the smartphone so it's very accessible to everyone but the process of photogrammetry not only allows us to record um, data and show it to everyone but also to look deeper into an object and analyze it with other tools rather than just the blind eye so for instance what you see on the left is the sculpture that you can see in the picture on the right and you can see how much more detail we can have in this image. This video can show you how uh, the process of visualization of a photogrammic image is on the computer. This is also recorded by Juan and is a 3D model of a petroglyph, so a stone with carving from the Spanish population. You can see how much more details and information you can record with the 3D models that you cannot necessarily see uh, yourself. And you can also interpret it after visiting the site. So it's really an important tool. But let's bring you back to my research. I've selected this specific site for Roberto Maduro. You can see it in the left hand side of the uh, map uh, for my research. I selected this specific site because I'm interested in the relationship between people and rivers. And as you can see, this site is surrounded by the Mayales River and is uh, a very interesting site to investigate environmental and human dynamics in Nicaragua. I've applied digital archaeology in my research in many ways. Um, today I will just tell you about the use of aerial photography 
In this case, actually, I use uh, Google Heart, which is an open source and quite practical tool to use. And I use it even before starting the archaeological excavation site. So what you can see here is an, an image from Google Earth. And if I tell you I was interested in seeing how the river changes, um, what can you see from this picture? Give yourself a couple of minutes and have a look at it. Well done. So basically, the blue line is the Magallanes River, where the river goes nowadays. But with the dotted line, I basically mark what you can see from the other pictures, and you can see that this is where the river was at certain point. And you can also see that they are cultivating there because the soil is more fertile because of the river, right? This is instead a map that was created after a pedestrian survey where we mark with a GPS, um, we mark the point where we could see on the ground marks of paleochannel, so of ancient river courses. And as you can see from the grey line, they more or less correspond to the one we saw from other pictures. So digital archaeology can help us um, understanding where to investigate and how. And also this map was created by using a GIS platform. And all those points were GPS points put on a GIS platform. The one uh, marked in red are instead these mounds, like the white we saw in August Buenos side. And the squares are where I also did the excavation. But I end up doing very small excavations and while investigating in a. And this is one of the excavations. This is excavation uh, one, the one closer to the river. And this is a 3D model of excavation. Uh, once again, um, archaeology, this archaeology is very useful because it allows me to sit in the excavation like if I was still there at any time if I would like to. The one on the right is simply a digitalization of a draw that I made at the end of the excavation. I made a draw by end, but once again, I use a digital tool to upload the draw uh, in an Illustrator platform and now I can. Uh, use it at any point. And yeah, this is me from the excavation. I wish I can go back very soon. And I thank you so much for your attention. In this slide, you can find some uh, um, reference um, that you can have a look at. At the bottom, there are all the references I cited in the test at the top, and you can see a manual. You can read if you're interested in knowing more about this archaeology and these links are also super useful. Uh, the SIA gives you a lot of information about what archaeology is. The GIS geography link gives you specific information of what the slide are, what the GIS, etc. Et and Historic England has a lot of resources there. You can see maps of archaeological sites from England. You can also download more manuals that specific on photogram based archaeology, mapping, all sorts of things. So I really recommend you to have a look and also to have a look at in your surroundings. There's so much archaeology out there and just um, these tools allow you to go out there without going out there from your desk. So yeah, they're great.